Dishy. Dish. Passa. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my top 10 Batman suits. So it's time for a good old fashioned fun look at some of the best Batman outfits throughout this character's history. I took a look at a lot of different suits and armors and have arrived at 10 that are pretty much my favorite. I considered everything Batman has appeared in from the comics to the movies, so it's a pretty wide net overall, but I did try and avoid having outfits that were too similar to each other. So without further ado, let's begin. Number 10. Old Purple Gloves. Yes, we're starting this list with the first ever Batman costume, featuring a grey suit, a black cape, and somewhat amusingly, purple gloves. I actually really like this outfit. Apologetic fans might look at this as goofy and try and forget about the whole thing, but it's THE classic Batman costume and it goes straight to the character's origins. And really, the origins of superhero comics themselves. There was a time where DC even wanted to pretend this costume never happened, going so far as to edit the gloves blue in certain reprints. That all has changed in recent years and DC has embraced its origins, both preserving the original look and even making the costume kind of part of continuity thanks to Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's work during Batman Zero Year. I think both the original outfit and the Year Zero retake both work for me and both pretty much take this spot together. Comics shouldn't be ashamed of their own history and it's a funny little detail that I'm glad they've managed to preserve in the continuity somewhat. The gloves are a small thing, I'd agree, yet I'd like to point out this kind of makes them the most detective-y of all the Batman suits we're about to talk about here. They remind me a little bit of forensic gloves, and even if they aren't, well there's nothing wrong with a little bit of color, and to me, the design that started this all really deserves some recognition. Leaving this out would have been a disservice to the character. Plus it might just be me, but even the old outfit still looks pretty cool. I can still see the spirit of Batman shining through this outfit and in those early issues. Everything cool about the character is there, to a degree, and you can see how Batman got popular. Sure, as we're about to see, the design was polished and improved over time, but we should never forget where Batman came from, or the fact that he can just rock those purple gloves like nobody else's business. Number 9. The Nolan Bat Suit from The Dark Knight Next up is a cool one, and one that shouldn't go unmentioned. The Nolan trilogy of Batman films is generally well regarded for a reason and matching their awesome reputation as a pretty cool and at the time groundbreaking set of bat suits. Officially, if this sort of thing matters to you, I'm giving this to the bat suit introduced in Dark Knight. It's a little less awkward and more free moving than the Batman Begins version, it was just a little more neat in how it was designed. I really liked the idea of a suit composed of multiple pieces like this one was, and it led to a cool plot point within the movie where it made Batman more mobile but less protected than when he was in his older suit. Make no mistake though, I think both of the bat suits are pretty cool. They're unmistakably Batman, yet look fairly realistic and functional. And they play up Batman's style. The way he is able to sweep down or just look intimidating, or just generally doing interesting things as Batman. Granted, at certain angles and in the wrong scene, the costume can look a little awkward and bulky, especially in the face. But 9 times out of 10 it works, and it works well. Without a doubt, the Dark Knight Batsuit is one of the best, and that's fitting for one of the best Batman movies. Number 8. Arkham Batsuit Origins So here we have another really cool entry. This one, like the last one on my list, sort of applies to all the Batsuits throughout the Arkham series of video games, but if I had to choose one, it really would be the suit from Arkham Origins. Out of all the versions, it's the most streamlined and in line with what I think of when I think of Batman. That is a little amusing since most would probably agree Arkham Origins is the weakest in the series of games, but to be fair, they're all really cool costumes. Not only do they happen to feature in a game that I happen to think really hammered home the feeling of playing as Batman, but these costumes look and move in an amazing way to fit that game. The ability of the suits to fluidly work with the mechanics of the gameplay is really worth commending. It's one thing to have a costume that looks cool, but the Arkham games make it all feel like it has been carefully designed with purpose, like the bat suit should be. The cape not only looks great, but it flows, it makes the gliding feel realistic, while it looks and feels heavy enough that it could plausibly be used to block certain attacks or stun opponents. 
The use of detective mode works well with the whole visual white eyes thing going on with Batman. And the costumes are just so cool looking. Each of the Arkham Bat suits are a little different from each other, but each of them are pretty awesome. And though my preference goes to Origins, they all really deserve at least some recognition. Arkham Asylum had a cool mix of armor and was the first one out of the gate, so you just gotta give good props for that. City nicely made the suit a little more in line with the comics while still looking cool and distinct. And Arkham Knight brought back the more armored look, but bulked things up even more, reflecting the fact that you're pretty much engaging in a one-man war with an entire army in that game. And like I said, I think Origins just really nailed their design with a mix of the Arkham City look, but with a healthy dose of tech and just a distinct, simple design of their own. In my opinion, that's what makes it most effective. It just has a very clean look to it that I can really appreciate. Regardless, they're all great, and like the Nolan bad suits, it's just nice to have a solid set of gear that lives up to a solid series of video games. And just like how the Nolan suits did good service to the movies they were in, these bad suits did a great service to the solid series of video games overall. Number 7. Hell Bad Armor. Alright, now we're cooking. Forged in the sun by Superman, augmented with the help of Green Lantern, tested by the Flash to be able to withstand the effects of the Speed Force, upgraded with advanced technology courtesy of Cyborg, tempered in the ocean depths by Aquaman, and mystically enhanced by Wonder Woman, this was a suit built in cooperation with the Justice League in the hope of providing Batman with the means and protection to deal with large-scale threats to the planet. It makes sense. In a team filled with superpowered monstrosities, Batman does feel a little out of step with everyone else at times, so this suit is supposed to help even the playing field a little bit. I love the design and it has a ton of cool abilities built into the suit. The cape changes shape and can form wings or even disperse into a swarm of artificial bats, while the armor itself grants all sorts of powers, including built-in technology and enough durability that Batman could take a hit from the likes of Superman or Darkseid. It's cool, one of the most powerful bat suits ever depicted in any media, and sadly a little underused. We haven't really seen much of this thing since its blockbuster debut during the whole Damian Wayne is dead affair, but it had a really cool reappearance recently, so it still very much is a part of Rebirth, and it, without a doubt is one of my all time favorite bat suits. You just need to see it in action more, because it's friggin' awesome. Number 6 The Justice Buster. So we just had a suit meant to help Batman fight at the side of the Justice League. Now let's look at one designed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against them. That would be the Justice Buster, also known as Fenrir. The latter name refers to the Norse wolf of mythology, who grew out of control, fighting the right hand of Tyr, god of law and heroic glory, and destined to one day kill Odin during Ragnarok. This not only fits in with the visual design of this Batsuit, but also with the idea of the Batsuit itself. It's pretty much a walking, talking tank designed to take down the Justice League members quickly and efficiently, and perhaps most impressively, to do it all without having to kill them. The suit has a magical artifact to keep Wonder Woman out of commission, a unique foam that sucks the moisture out of Aquaman, an electromagnetic nerve tree to take down Cyborg, and a special gem to neutralize Green Lantern's powers. It's capable of taking a punch from Superman and has a gauntlet equipped with microscopic red suns collected with the help from Ray Palmer, the Atom, so that Batman can engage in direct combat with Big Blue himself. There's probably a bunch of other features and last minute countermeasures we haven't seen out of this thing, because we haven't seen much of this thing, but without a doubt, the most interesting part of this suit actually has to be the countermeasure against the Flash. See, there's a special program in the Fenrir that automatically activates when Barry Allen approaches the mech. It uses a special frictionless coating to react to the Flash, so long as he isn't running at full speed, and is able to counter and predict his movements. The protocol is so fast Batman doesn't even have time to activate it or control it. This all just happens automatically when the suit detects flashes nearby, and the program is executed before Bruce can even think about it or react to it. It's a very cool idea, furthered by the knowledge that this protocol is actually what took the most work and money to create out of the entire suit. I find it just such a cool idea, and the mech looks awesome itself. It's so bulky and powerful looking, it's essentially Batman's equivalent of the Hulkbuster. Sure, Batman's had a lot of armors and even a few mechs over the years, but this really was the best for me out of all those mechs. Not only does it look cool, but it gets right into Batman's habit of always planning for the worst case scenarios and designing all sorts of crazy ways to fight his own team members if the need ever arises. I know the Justice League sometimes looks down on Batman for being this way, 
but I actually think it's good planning considering the sheer number of times heroes are turned evil or under the effects of some kind of mind control. I mean, geez, it just happened last month. <laughs> it's the natural conclusion of the rather famous Justice League Tower of Babel story. This is who Batman is. He plans, he is smart, and occasionally he can build one hell of a cool mech. The other cool thing I like about Fenrir is, is that it's not overpowered either. Batman just barely manages to take down the Justice League with this thing during Batman Endgame. If it ever really came to it, both the Flash and Superman are quite capable of overpowering this suit. They weren't coming after Batman at full force, and that's kind of the only reason he won. If either of them ever did come at him without holding back, Bruce is basically screwed. So it's a cool, well-balanced Batman suit that I really like, and is definitely one of my all-time favorites. Number 5. Batman Beyond I'm a big Batman Beyond fan, so this was one of the first suits I definitely considered putting on this list. And though it's jumped around on this top 10 quite a bit in terms of rank, it's always been on the higher side of this list because I'll just look at this thing, it's so cool! The Batman Beyond Batsuit is essentially the last version of the Batsuit created at the end of Bruce Wayne's career as a superhero. As such, it benefits the most from futuristic technology. This is actually why the outfit doesn't bother having a cape. There are retractable wings that allow for gliding, so there's no need for it. The suit is also protective enough that the cape isn't needed for its standard ability to block out fire and that sort of thing. This costume just does it all already. Additionally, the Batman Beyond gear has dozens of gadgets built into it, including rocket thrusters in the boots, special surveillance technology, batarangs which can be used as explosives or to deliver electric charges, retractable claws, and a grappling hook. It can also adhere to certain walls and ceilings, and can turn almost completely invisible. The gear is made of a special polymer that can pretty much fit anywhere too, hence why it bonds so well to both Bruce Wayne and Terry McGinnis even though both men are built quite differently. So the suit is not only cool and all the crazy things it can do, but it also looks awesome. The polymer design means that Batman, even fully masked, is incredibly expressive. Whatever Batman is feeling, you can see it on his face. That's cool and makes the costume quite unique in the visual design, and as such I really think it deserves a spot here. A lot of times a new Batman suit suffers from over-design. Too much flourish and detail can really turn the whole thing into a bit of a mess. That isn't what happened in the Beyond outfit though. It was nice and simple, yet instantly unique and different from any other bat suit before it. The red works well to this effect, yet it's still Batman at its very core. These days, the nice people over at DC are actually having some fun with this costume and the idea of the Beyond suit still being within continuity. So every once in a while we get a hint that this is still the direction the Batsuits are heading towards in their design and technology as it develops. And that's pretty cool. That's why we see like Batwing running around or certain flashes of the future where Bruce is using a suit similar to the Batman Beyond gear. I think that idea is great. Overall, the Batman Beyond Batsuit is easily one of the very best out there and robustly deserves a spot on this list. Number 4. DCEU Batsuit The Batsuit that we see in the recent DC Extended Universe movies is without a doubt one of my all-time favorites. Some fans might not love this placement on the list, but just look at this thing! As a live-action Batsuit, this is, in my opinion, the best one they've done yet. It just looks so Batman. But not only does it live up to this idea of the costume, it also feels like it really allowed for natural movement and just looking cool at all times, something even the Nolan Batsuits struggled with. It just is so well done and feels so right, and we get to see a lot of flavors in the costume in Batman v Superman, which is just great and makes it feel like Batman's running around in the big screen in like the purest form we've ever seen in a live action movie. And then we get to see the cool variation I really liked in that one vision, and the armored version when he goes up against Superman. All three were great, because the movie just absolutely nails the look of this thing. This looks and feels like Batman, just a dude with no powers running around with all these superheroes, and Ben Affleck just pulls off the role like nobody has ever done in any movie thus far. It feels like he just lives in the part when he's in the Batsuit, and I was really impressed by every scene with Batman in it. Say what you will about Batman v Superman. Actually, I did like it, but I've only seen the extended version. But however you feel about the movie, even if you didn't enjoy it, this is just a cool version of the Batsuit. Even the most hardened detractors of the movie typically reserve the fact that at the very least, Batman was cool as hell and the best part of Batman v Superman. And when you consider the look and feel of the Batsuit, I can understand why and think that, at least in some way, it really helps sell the audience on Batman. 
Yes, he was quite a bit different, but you know what? The suit helped me sell me on this new version of this character, and I gotta say, I don't really see what everyone's so upset about. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, that happened. Number 3, Noelle Batsuit. So as we get into the top three, we're moving into the really classic, iconic looks for Batman that I think most define the character or just the coolest versions of the standard Batman look. One that really ended up near the top of this list was this Noelle Batsuit. Designed by the creator of this series, Lee Mermeo, this version of the Batsuit is one of the coolest out there, at least in my opinion. I think it's the best version of the Batsuit that only relies on black and grey. There's a nice use of armor in that look, yet it doesn't go overboard and remains unmistakably Batman. It looks cool, it's got a lot of nice detail to it, and has been gradually becoming a fan favorite among the Batman community for a good reason. Me, I totally see why this is a popular one almost instantly. Many Batsuits have been created over the years, yet something just sticks with me concerning this one. There's a nice polished look to it, clearly pulling inspiration from past versions of Batman and coalescing into something that's a little unique and kind of uh, an instant classic. It's not a classic, having been only created not that long ago in 2011. But as a modern Batsuit in the comics, this really is one of the best I've seen so far and yeah, down the road I think this is going to be one that people remember fondly. Oh, speaking of which... Number 2 Light Blue and Grey by Neil Adams So there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of blue and grey variations of Batman's costume. I didn't want to fill this list with every kind that I thought was cool, so I just picked my favorite among the light and blue grey runs. After that, the decision was easy, as Neil Adams' design was definitely my favorite from the Silver Age of comic books, and in my opinion, the best use of this color palette out of all the Batsuits from this era. The use of the Batman insignia coupled with Adams bringing the cape around Batman's shoulders instead of just hanging it off his back, and the slight increase in Batman's bulk at the time were among the first steps ever taken to make Batman a little darker and more in line with the character we know today. The suit itself was meant to be tougher than the old costumes too, more resistant to tearing and both fire and chemicals within the story. This would all pave the way for future Batman stories with darker tones, more adult themes, and a tougher Batsuit. Its design would later be used for strange apparitions, a story which in turn inspired Batman the Animated Series and Tim Burton's Batman movie. So yeah, this costume is basically like a huge reason Batman is the way he is today and is a major part of his history. The great thing about this outfit is that it could still have Batman doing lighter superhero things while also being a rough crime fighter dealing with more mature content depending on the story at hand. The costume worked well in both contexts and that's a great thing. Best of all, it still looks great to me. Being able to be both important to Batman's history while still somehow looking cool after 40 years? That's a hell of an achievement. So this easily takes second place, and for a while it was going to take the number one spot. But there was one outfit I just couldn't not give it to. Number 1. Dark Blue and Grey by Jim Lee Yeah, my all-time favorite Batsuit is actually pretty standard in design, but the look and feel of this Batsuit is really one of the best I've ever seen, specifically the version that kind of debuted during Hush. And you know what? I'm not the first person to say this, and there's a good reason for it. This is one of the best, most iconic bat suits out there. It's a nice mix of a dark outfit, got a little bit of color splashed in, really works overall. Everything about it, from bulking up Batman a bit more to just making him a bit more menacing in design, it all just works so well to create a modern, mature looking Batman. I just love this bat suit. This is Batman, and the simple design with the black logo and little else adding to it makes for a great outfit that stays with you because it's just so simple and iconic. This is in no small part because Jim Lee is such a good artist. It's hard not to look at these drawings and just not be blown away by them. When I need a default image of Batman in a given video, I usually try and use one of Jim Lee's pictures. When I think of Batman, this is pretty much what I think of. This is what I mean when I say it is iconic. It stays with you. It defines the character and what we think of him. And honestly, this is why I think it's the best take on Batman's costume yet. Yeah, there's, it's very simple. I don't have anything else to say on it. But you know what? If it works, it works. And to me, this is my favorite. Of course, that does get into something worth mentioning. My age and interest mean that Jim Lee was pretty much the major Batman artist that broke me into Batman comics. Not only that, but art and design are pretty subjective in general. As such, while these have been my favorites, they probably weren't the same for you. 
That's a great thing since consensus is boring. So let me know what bat suits you guys like the most in the comments section below. There were a lot of these, so many that I could easily make a sequel to this list, so we might do that. For now, I'm just going to go with these 10. These were 10 great bat suits, and in my opinion, my absolute favorite. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it and would want to help us make more content, check out our Patreon page. Supporters have a say in the videos we make and get access to other cool perks. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.